everybody. Welcome to the comments from the peanut gallery podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Kurtz. I'm here with a very special guest right now. My man who literally killed the dream killer the other night, Mr. Daniel Scary Carey. But first, I want to give a quick couple shout outs to a couple of sponsors out there with comments from the peanut gallery podcast. I want to throw a huge shout out to Performance MMA. Check them out online, www.performancemma.com. Use promo code CFTPG for 15% off your purchase. Also want to throw a huge shout out to Pure Spectrum CBD. Just joined on with the Pure Spectrum team. So if you guys go to www.purespectrumcbd.com and use the promo code CFTPG10 in the uh, in the coupon spot in the uh, in the checkout, you will be sure to get yourself 10% off of that purchase. So thank you very much for supporting the project all along up to this point. And now without further ado, my man Daniel Scary Carey. How you doing, brother? No, that's great. I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I mean, I can only imagine the elation and the the feeling that you must have, you know, that you must be feeling right now after uh after just such an incredible performance the other night, you know. I mean, it was something that uh that a lot <clears throat> of the masses maybe didn't see, but those of us who know you knew that that was coming. Right. So <laughs> Real quick, Daniel, uh, you know, we want to throw out a shout out to to your team, your coaches, sponsors, everybody out there in the mix. Yeah, I want to throw a big shout out to Brian Foster. That's my coach. Uh, without him, there's no way I would have won. He came up with a great game plan. Uh, well, more like guidelines to follow. And I listened to him the whole way through. The day before weigh-ins, I woke up on weight. Or day of weigh-ins, sorry. I woke up on weight, which never happened for me. And then um, – Ed Barnett is one of my biggest sponsors. He helped me out a lot. And then Tim Metcalf, uh, both those guys, I, I couldn't have been here without you. And then everyone at Family Combat, my wife and my mom and kids, that's, that's really it, man. I kept it real simple this time. Nice. Well, I mean, you, you do have a very tight-knit group just the way that you said. You had a pretty awesome homecoming from your family as soon as you got back there. So that, oh, that yeah. had to have been awesome to come back and see the love that you got from your kids that way. Yeah, it, it was it was awesome seeing the, the kids and stuff when I got back. Uh, I know my oldest daughter was terrified because she had watched his highlight video and stuff, and she, she was so worried. And my other two kids. Oh, no. Did we lose the feed? They, they have no nerves or anything for me. Well... That's good, man. I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that everything worked out for your favor on that side of things. No damage taken in the fight, being that it was within the first minute that you subbed him. You know, I I dude, I was watching it and I was just like, oh shit, because I saw you look over at Foster in the corner and you had that big smile on your face. And before you had even said it on the mic, like I could read your lips and like it looked like you said, I got it. Yeah, I was. I was. I, I told him it was over. Uh, right when I, I, right before I pulled guard, uh, you could hear Foster yell, "Snap him down!" And uh, and and as soon as like he pulls up, after I snapped him down, I, I jump guard and I start telling him to tap as soon as my legs go around him because I knew he he wasn't getting out. I mean, my my ground game is too far ahead of his, and I, I knew once we were in that position, it was over. There, there wasn't that. I mean, I, I had like two minutes left or a minute left or something, and yeah, he was he was in a world of trouble at that point. So I knew it was over. You know. So that that being said, with you having a strong background with your jujitsu and Gaston obviously having a you know a world renowned striking pedigree, what was that a big? focal point of the uh, of the game plan that that coach foster gave for you uh yes and no it, it like um we wanted to touch on the jiu-jitsu part like that really he gave me like guidelines one was don't brawl so don't like stand in front of him and swing like i've done in the past and uh i just now got out of that like i don't i don't do that so much anymore um but as long as we don't stand in front of him and brawl, I can sh with him for 15 minutes. I may not win, but I could stand up with him for 15 minutes. And the goal was to make it an MMA fight. So, uh, you know, stand up, strike, move around, don't stand in front of him, consistent feints. And 
whenever I saw an opening for a takedown, go ahead and go for it, but don't kill myself trying to take him down. That's understandable. <clears throat> Oh man, we're kind of chopping out on you. I, I started playing Muay Thai with him, which was foolish. He pushed me against the cage. The next time I went to uh, the head and arm position, and, and uh, yeah, that front headlock position, he couldn't, he couldn't deal with that. So we just beat him in transition was the game plan. You know, with that being a, a little bit of a tell, did you did you see, you know, kind of that the neck was open right away with him coming in with his head down, kind of, you know, r rushing in on you? Yeah, um, I think he was trying to roll my right hand and maybe counter, or maybe he was I, not 100% sure what he was trying to do. But uh, once my once I got him, like his head in my armpit, uh, I knew he was in a, he was in a world of trouble. Um, the guillotine wasn't the first thing I was going for. I wanted to just hold him there and knee him, but then uh, I had to look over at my corner and and Brian started yelling, you know, snap him down, and then. That's what ultimately set up the guillotine. I love it. Because, I mean, even at that, you can hear, like, that's what you got to love about being that we're in 2019 with this technology and with the broadcast and all the stuff that they have available now. Being that it was, uh, you know, that, that it's so mic'd up at this point, you could hear you telling referee Mike Beltran, he's out. Yeah, I, I told him like three times. Cause he was, he was out for, I mean, uh, for a minute. I mean, he was, he was out for a while, at least 10 seconds. I, I could be exaggerating, but I feel like he was gone for, uh, for quite a while. It was making me nervous, but I wasn't going to let go until he took me off of him, you know? So, right. Well, cause then, you know, Mike uh, gives him that, you know, like, Hey, show me something, show well, me something. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what what's what goes through your mind in that sort of process when you when you know that a guy is out but the referee is not stopping the fight like what what's the mentals in that in that sort of time frame? Well, uh, in jujitsu tournaments, I've had people do that. They'll just lay there, and then you let go, and then all of a sudden they start grappling again. And uh, I had way too much money laying on the table to not let go so i was going to hold on until the ref physically pulled me off which is exactly what happened but the last thing i want to do is cause like permanent damage i don't want to hurt him you know outside of competition right but no, uh, in my head i was prepared for him to die i mean i wasn't gonna let go so the ref pulled me off which i was kind of nervous about. yeah yeah definitely you know was this uh was this the first time that you've been on the main card with bellator Yes. Yep. Okay. Because I know I mean, I'm obviously main prelims, for, it, it, I'm sorry. I I know you've been in prelims, post limbs, all of that. I just didn't. I couldn't remember if you had been on the main card itself yet. No. No. Not yet. I've always been the swing bout. It seems like. So I, I looked out on this one. That's awesome, though, man. I, I was so happy for that. You know, because. To be honest, there's a lot of people online that, you know, I mean, you know how it is. You know the game. I mean, Gaston having the hype behind him that, that he does. I mean, which, and to a certain extent, understandably so, when you have some of the highlight reel knockouts that he does, like you had previously mentioned that your daughter had watched, you know, the spinning back elbows to just the general kind of buildup that they've tried to put the investment into his star power or building his brand. But, and, and, and you know, it's it's something that that like I say we all know what you bring to the table, but the world hadn't seen it yet. Right. So so you know I I think that that was a, that was a great you know breakout party for you if you will in that sense. And then let's talk about one of the most important parts of all. You called out the American <laughs> gangster, yeah, <laughs> Mister Bad Guy Inc. himself, Chael P. Sony. Said Chael Sonnen, you could get these hands. I loved it. I loved it because everybody talked about it. That was oh, yeah. genius planning. I I don't know. You know, you you said that you've always wanted to do that. I don't know. You know what was going on right then and there in your mind. But that is the perfect example of what Chael tells all the fighters to do. And when you get that moment, you take advantage of that moment. You do everything that you can to maximize. <laughs> 
<laughs> your brand when you get the microphone in your hand. I think you did. I feel like I did. I've been wanting to do that. Uh, I've been wanting to just call them out as like a joke thing, you know, for uh, since my first Bellator fight. And they never gave me a mic. Uh, even after like winning and, and getting a submission and all that, never got a mic. This is the first time. And I almost forgot. That's why I had to ask Big John to come back. Uh, <laughs> it almost passed me by. You know, but uh, I was pretty amped up and I'm surprised I remembered. Well, I'm glad she did, and understandably so. If it had kind of just, you know, got past you right there in the moment, but yeah, you know, what what was the what was the feeling when you feel right? You know, when describe what was going through your mind immediately when Beltran pulls you off? Because obviously, anybody who watches the you know watches the feed of right then and there, you could see the excitement and the expression on your face. But what was going through your head right then and there at that moment? Well, uh, I told you so. Is, is the thing that just kept going through my head. And uh, as soon as I got up, you could see me run around the cage. I'm looking for uh, Josh Thompson and the other announcer to tell him I fucking told you so. And that's what I was yelling the whole time because um, I gave an interview, uh, like a TV, like the commentator interview. And all they did was talk about how I wrestled. I've never wrestled. I'm not a wrestler. I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm not a wrestler. And uh, they were talking about how I needed to use wrestling and I need to do this and how good his striking is, and how great he is and all this stuff. And I, I said, man, I don't, I don't give a fuck about any of that crap. I have a game plan. I know you guys brought me out to lose and I'm not. And then uh, they asked me how it, I thought it was going to end. And I said, it'll be like two or three transitions and I'm going to catch him in something, I, whether it be a submission, a strike. I don't know, but it's first or second round. And uh, they all kind of laughed and, and, you know, joked a little bit. And I was like, oh, OK, motherfuckers, you're going to see. And then that that's pretty much why I was so amped up. I wanted to tell them I fucking told you so. Big John was the only one that was really respectful in the interview. I mean, they, they were all respectful, but you could just see like, uh, oh, yeah, right, kid. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I know exactly what uh, you're I didn't, saying. I didn't come there, to, you know. No, and, not and at all. Yeah. And then like. I don't think I would have any losses on my regular record right now if I was training here uh, at Family Combat from the beginning. It just I'm a full time fighter here. That's all I do is is train MMA. There's no, I do nothing else. I am, and uh, sometimes I go with my coach and we set up a cage at a place, and I'll run the cage. You know what I mean? Like everything's mm -hmm. MMA here, and uh, this is uh, this was a big part I, I think I was missing in uh, in my career, and then. It's going to be really hard for anybody to beat me. I'm not going to say I'm going to go undefeated or undefeated or anything like that because I highly doubt that happens. But it's a whole new me. You're going to see a whole new Daniel for sure. So let's talk about that because the last time that we had you on, you were still in Oklahoma. And you, know, you and the, along with the full family have moved out there to Arkansas now. Just describe a little bit about how that transition went. Uh, well, at first, I didn't want to move, and then um, I'd lost um, a fight, and I was taking it pretty hard because I knew I shouldn't have lost to that guy. You know, I, I just—it's just one of those things, you know. Just one of one of those—you make a mistake and then you lose, and it, it just haunts you, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife was like, "Well, I think we need to move," and I looked at Colorado, like Factory X, but it was just—I can't move my kids out there. And I'm a family man. I ain't going to leave my family to go train. That just, that ain't going to happen. And uh, Brian hit me up. And then my uh, old coach, uh, Cortez, was like, man, you, sh you should go out to Brian's, you know. And Brian was really respectful. And he was telling me, you know, uh, what it was like here. One of my buddies fought for Brian's show. And I got to train up here for a few days. And I was like, all right, this my wife liked it. My mom liked it up here. Kids can run around and be crazy. I could do MMA every day. Cost of living's cheap down here. And, uh, and man, it just, I moved down here a few months later. I wish I would have done it two, three years ago. And, and I think my career would be way different right now. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's on the up and up now, right? Well, I hope that, so. That, you know. that, that's, what, that's what's most important is, you know, I mean... 
we can't really change the past, but all we can do is approach the future, right? But, you know, so, I mean, obviously, with that being said out there, uh, you know, you had mentioned possibly coming out this direction with Factory X. You, you're you still kind of within the same system, though, in a roundabout way. Because, obviously, you know, out there at Conquer, Cortez is a, you know, is a byproduct of Factory X. Foster is also has Factory uh, Coach Foster has Factory X lineage as well. Right. And... You know, what's crazy is, is those two guys go back even deeper than Factory X being at the hit squad. So, you know, I think that you're in great hands out there. And I'm only, you know, I'm only excited to see what, what sort of scary gets brought to the cage next. Yeah, me too, man. Because, that, I mean, like I say, we... All of us around here, everybody that knows you, me and Yusuf were talking about it even that day because we, we were watching the, uh, we were at one of the, uh, one of the sports pubs around here, around the gym, watching UFC 242 in, in the afternoon. And right. then talking about, you know, being able to, you know, to see you on the zone that night. So, you know, I mean, and I know you've trained with Yusuf at, at one point. So yeah, it's, just, awesome. uh, it's, it's fun to see, uh, fun to see how everything just keeps on building. It's a, it's a much smaller world in the fight game than a lot of people realize. There's a lot more connections than people, people imagine. Oh yeah. Yeah. We all tend to know each other, especially like the more you fight and then the big stage, definitely everybody knows each other Definitely, or knows something of someone, you know, Daniel, I want to rewind it back for a second to something that you mentioned earlier. You mentioned, you know, the thought of you were being brought in there as almost kind of, you know, the uh, the animal for slaughter. Or, you know, you, you were the sacrificial lamb. What what did that feel like? You know, what, what was the, your, what was your emotion? What was the mentals? Like, how, how did that feel? Well, so, uh... It all started like I had got hurt. Uh, I had hurt my elbow and uh, I dropped like I had an opponent drop. He was just being a little he he just didn't want to fight. I had an opponent drop out of Brian's show and uh, we tried finding opponents and I ended up hurting my elbow. So Brian said, all right, you're not fighting on this card. So I was rehabbing, you know, I was taking time off. And then next thing I know. Uh, Cortez hits me up and tells me, hey, the Bellator just messaged me and they want to see if you want to fight, you know, September 7th. And uh, I forget, it was like five, six weeks away, you know, plenty of time. I was already in shape. And I go, sure, who's the opponent? And he said, Gaston Bolanos, you know, I, I just murdered his last name. And I knew who he was right away. And I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm hurt. Uh, let me get back to you. And then. When I got back to the gym, I told Brian about him. Brian pulled up to his, pulled up his spinning back elbow fight. It was like, oh, dude, you finished this guy first round. And then we watched uh, another fight of his, and Brian started getting really excited. And it was like, dude, you're gonna murder this cat. He can't, he can't mess with you. And seeing how excited he was for it, I was like, oh man, we gotta take it. Now he's the only person that was. Because everyone else that found out who I was fighting gave me that same look like that. Oh, him. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Uh, all right. You know, we would go to other gyms and you tell them and then you get that look. Because they know I'm not a wrestler, so I'd have to stand with them for a while, you know. Mm -hmm. And everybody just kept giving me a look, like just writing me off. And I was thinking, oh, okay, motherfuckers, you're going to see. And then uh, when we get to San Jose, I was getting it bad. Uh Every person in Bellator was looking at me like I was going out there to get killed, you know. And then the commentators, they kind of added to it, talking to them. And then I, I tried to stay stoic. And um, it just it just fueled the fire, man. I've never trained so hard. And I, I just can't. I, I'm ready to go again. I was trying to fight this Friday on the same card as him, but he wouldn't let me. So. <laughs> Well, sometimes you got to have, have a little bit of time there. Right. Now, how how hard is it in that sort of situation for you to maintain your composure? Because, I mean, it, it's got to be frustrating. Like, it's got to be something that just you know, pisses you the fuck off that you're like, hey, bitch, I'm qualified too. Like, yeah, it, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, no, I understand completely. And uh, I always do better when I have a lot of pressure on me like that or my opponent's talking. I always do far better. Um, <clears throat> after the fight, as you can see, like with this one, I just let it all out. But I just go super into myself. I don't say anything. I get really stoic. You can see me at weigh-ins. I look like I, I just smoked a bunch, right? Like I look blazed like a motherfucker, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> dude, I just had no emotion at all. Even uh, I, I wasn't nervous. I didn't. I, I don't know how to describe it. I've never felt that way before. I, even in the pit, right before we walk out, Gaston's standing right next to me, behind me. You know, he shook my hand, and uh, and I like him. He, there's no. He shook my hand. He was like, "Man, I'm excited. Thanks for taking the fight." And I said, "No, thanks for the opportunity." And uh, we were about to walk out in this arena and fight, and I had no emotion. I was just happy to be there, but there was no. Uh, it was completely stuck. There. But as soon as the ref pulled me off, it all came out. And the, the, the weeks of dealing with that, the commentators, all my nerves came out. I just lost it. it was crazy. In a happy way. I was extremely happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's like a complete validation of all the moves that you've made over the course of the last few months of me and, you know, uprooting, moving the family across state lines, all that sort of thing. That, that just has to be something that gives you the feeling of oh man like you know the, the weight is off my shoulders and then too as you had mentioned you know your, your fight before that was you know was a loss so it puts you back in the winning column and against a you know a, a credible opponent you know so, someone that everybody is going to look at you know we'll, we'll go to look at your tapology and we'll see oh shit gas and blondes okay okay you know a, as things build build along and continue to grow for you so yeah, that, that just has to be, I can only imagine what it feels like in that sense. And then just to see like all the, you know, all the mentions on Twitter and everybody that night was just like, oh my God, Daniel Carey just called out Chael Son and like all, all those sorts of things. So I'm nothing but happy for you, man. Like I was so pumped up when, you know, when I was watching there, I was sitting there watching it on my headphones in my, uh, in my living room with my, my roommates and you know, everybody else was kind of watching what was on TV and everything. Like, I was just kind of ha hanging out to be social, you know, not just sitting in my room by myself. But I'm watching your fight on my phone. I just hop up out of my chair. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> like this guy's uh, probably crazy. Like, I literally, mind you, this was like four days mo uh, that I had lived in this house at this point. Right. So, yeah, I mean, and they're, they're all great people, all all incredible. But they're just probably thinking like this guy's fucking crazy. Watch, you know, watching the fights and all that, just going insane watching these. But yeah, man, I was, uh, I was so happy to see that result for you, and just because I know how hard you work. I mean, I know the story behind how you got the nickname Scary. Like, I don't yeah. know how many people out there to the masses know that story. We've shared it on this show, obviously, but you know, that's that's just something that from having the personal attachment that I can't help but love watching. Right. Yeah. It makes a difference when you kind of know somebody. Definitely. Actually get so I got to ask, you know, as a, a natural follow-up for everything that we've talked about, what is next? Is there something that you've already been in talks for? Or, you know, I mean, obviously you mentioned that you, you wanted to get on something right away again this week, but it has... Has there been any talks from you know from the matchmakers with Bellator, or have they you know have they extended a you know a, a new contract to you? Anything along those lines? Any updates? No, uh, we thought they would hit me with a contract shortly after, but we haven't heard anything. So it was just that single fight, as far as I know. Uh, they haven't messaged me, but I'm talking to a, a management company now. So the odds of me getting managed by a, by somebody that get me those big fights is is on the horizon for sure. Hell yeah. You know, Scott Coker, come on. Give my man know, a right? deal. You know, give my man a deal. Do a podcast. No. But yeah. yeah. There's uh, Mr. Kyron. Oh, nice. Sriracha Sensei. <laughs> Shout out to Kyron Bowen. But, hey, showing yeah. up for sparring. <laughs> oh, sparring night for you guys out there. Nice. Yeah. Well, I Brian's making me take a few days off. My knuckle, my knuckles got a little swollen, uh, so I'm not, I'm not doing too much. I'm just co coming up here to coach, basically. Nice. I mean, that's understandable. You know, the first week, first week off of a fight, kind of taking yeah. it easy, easing, easing your way back into it. 
And I could imagine, too, that, you know, it probably feels a little bit more sore to some of those soft tissue things like that, being that, you know, it's been since uh, since the end of November from the last, you know, from your last fight. Yeah. I, I can't say that from personal experience. All I can go by is the anecdotal information that I get from all of you guys, you know, from if you're if you're in the, you know, in the flame and fighting all the time, if you're in that fire, you kind of have that, I guess, just tolerance to us i don't know if that's the right word but you know from throwing live bullets because it's obviously you get a little bristle on you you know you can take some shots right you know? right you know and this is another one that you know goes back with uh with coach foster but i had a good conversation with dustin jacoby about this dustin jacoby i don't know if you uh if you're aware but he he went into a, a tournament and won three fights uh, about a month and a half ago two months ago something along those lines i remember and, hearing about yeah, he actually he jumped up two weight classes in the process. He he's a middleweight, but went up to heavyweight and went and won all three fights. So I mean, kudos to you, Dustin Jacoby. But you know, he talked about just how like sore like his knuckles and stuff felt for the next little bit after. And I just asked him the same kind of question: is you know, like, do you think that it's possibly because you just you haven't had a fight in a little while, and then it's the first time that you've? I mean, because obviously you train hard. But you're not going that full, you know, 110% throw in heat and practice or in sparring that you would in an actual competition setting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you finally get to that point and it's like, oh, shit, like my body hasn't felt this level of shock for a minute. So you probably just feel it a little bit more. Whereas if, you know, if you're on that three, four time a year schedule, then it's just, you know what? It is what it is. Right. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's no, kind of it, the way that I process it. It makes perfect sense. Only I'm, I think I'm good. Like, uh, I would have probably trained today. Uh, tomorrow, I wanted to start full time again tomorrow, but uh, I have to go with him. Well, I don't have to, but I'm going to go with Brian to help him cut weight because he fights this Friday, uh, kickboxing match. So I'll go up there and uh, support him, sit with him in the sauna, stuff like that. Nice. And just to put out how crazy he is, this fucking dude is going to go make weight and then rehydrate or whatever. The next morning, the morning of his actual fight, me and him and hopefully some will come set up a game that he is going to fight it. After his fight, we're going to take down the cage and go back home. He's, he's, a, he's a wild man. I don't know how he does the stuff he does. Cowboy before cowboy, dude. Yeah, he's like, the best I've, dude I've ever trained with. He's 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 crazy. I've heard nothing but crazy stories. You know, I mean, good, but but you know, I, <laughs> I've heard nothing but like the almost like the legendary folklore sort of tales about Brian Foster from everyone. You know, whether it be from Coach Mark Montoya to Cortez to Dustin to Chris Camozzi to Danny Molina out in Nebraska at Skywalker Boxing. You know, all the all these guys have all these like legendary Foster stories. I'm just I'm so pumped that I'm finally gonna be uh, doing a podcast with him coming up. So yeah. it, it it's crazy to finally make that connection, you know. Did you guys set a date? Yeah, we're actually doing it tomorrow morning. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, a- adding to the list of things on his uh, on his schedule. Yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. Because he I know he'll be cutting quite a bit tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I watched his uh, I watched the highlights of his last kickboxing fights like that. If you could call those fights, <laughs> they, it, well, it was ridiculous. I, I was giving his opponents a little bit more respect on that side of things, but yeah, he just completely like eviscerated those guys. And those guys were pretty good too. Like uh, one of them was like nineteen and one or something. And he he goes out and makes them look like amateurs. That's just that's just how good he is. I mean, dude, Denver takes a day off, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I don't remember which one it was because he fought. Correct me if I'm wrong. He fought three fights in the one night too. Correct. Yep. Yep. I don't know which one it was in that order, but there was the one where he kind of like roll stepped off of a jab and just threw that kick that just like buckled this dude. Like the, how oh, the very last one. Okay. Yeah. He yeah, stopped it with uh, calf kicks. 
Yep, yep. I just yep. thought, like, just the, the angle, like, the quickness, like, holy shit, that angle and just the, the ability to create that strike in that sort of distance, like, that that was pretty uh, that was pretty entertaining to watch. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but he called his shots. Um, the first fight, I, I, I don't remember the order, but he called his shots, at least two of them. So I, it's amazing. He said that my fight would end the first man, maybe, but I think more the second. You know, he, he basically I, he breaks stuff down in a way that I, I've seen very few people do. Obviously, a very strong fight IQ. I mean, to be able to yeah, to see high. all of those things, you know, so far in advance of when they're happening. Oh, you yeah. Know, so, Daniel, we've covered uh, covered a fair amount of everything in the recent, uh, you know, with uh, following up from last November coming up all the way through to now. You know, is there is there anything that we haven't touched yet that you want to get out there to let all of your fans, all of the listeners, everybody out there that's following along know? Uh, one thing that it, it's been driving me nuts, but I heard that. If you would have bet on me the night of my stone fight to win by a finish, that one dollar you would have made thirteen hundred dollars. I didn't know the betting odds were that bad, or you know that one-sided. And if I would have bet my purse, I would have won eleven. That, Holy cow! Yeah, a guy up here at the gym did the math for me, and then told me about it, and that. Uh, bother somebody else what bot what about that bothers you the most the fact that they counted you out that bet or you know the people that laid their bets you know the the odds makers everything along those lines like what was it that stuck out to you the most uh well i wish i would have bet money on myself i should have listened to my coach a little bit more and uh probably believed a little bit more it was going to end in the first round like that and bet some money because i would have been sitting way better right now which i'm doing fine but that just oh, that dress drives me nuts one dollar thirteen hundred i'll be honest i didn't know the line i i mean i don't i don't i try to stay out of the gambling side of things myself or like at least within fighting or doing any sort of bets on fights just because for me personally like in my analysis or my breakdowns i don't know like i just don't want to be skewed or be biased by it if that makes sense by by you know who i you know place a bet on or anything but damn it like if i if i were to know it because like i say like i mean i know what you bring to the table i right. mean We've been, you know, linked up for well over a year and a half now at, at this point. I, I know your skill level and what you bring. If I would have seen that there was a line like that, I mean, even if you throw down a few bucks, one, first and foremost, I know that you're going to go out there and leave it all in the cage. So whatever with, with that end of thing. But to know what the return could have been, oh, my Lord, I didn't know that, they, that it was that high. I, I, I didn't either end. That's all I've heard that from other people. I've not checked it myself. So, you know, it's I probably need to check into it, but still it's, it's that's been eating them. Yeah, I know that I saw, you know, a lot of people had been talking about, you know, what the line and everything was on Twitter throughout, you know, when they were when they were going through the fights and everything, but you know, just one of I guess crazy how it all works out or shakes up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, aside from that end, is you know, is there anything else you know that that's weighing heavy on your mind? You got to get off your chest, frustrations, praises, anything? Uh, other than Bellator calling me about a multi-fight contract, you know, <laughs> I got no worries, man. I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, this fight let me pay my rent for a year, so my family's set for a year. Like we're good, you know. So. uh I, I, I'm fine. Dude. I couldn't be happier. I'm so happy to hear that, man. That that's awesome. Like, just just to see, just to see how all the people around me or that that I've known throughout this game for a minute have success. Like, I love it because at at the end, like, I mean, 
I truly value the relationship end of things. Yeah, that that that's very important to me personally. So you know, I mean, I I can only uh, you know I can only imagine how it feels now that you're you know financially set from all of this and that your family's taken care of because that's obviously you know I mean in this fight game that's that's one of the biggest concerns for most everybody out there until you get something that is that big long term deal so on and so forth. So to know that you know you were able to to make the come up on that and have things secured for a minute, like dude, I love hearing that. That's so awesome. Oh, yeah. And of course, I mean, all your boys from Oklahoma were, uh, you know, were hitting up the comments and everything, you know, showing out love, K Viso, Chris Mullins, you know, all, all those guys out there, and of course, the Crazy Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, I still t- stay in touch. You know, I plan on um, making my way back down there sometime next month. It's just a two and a half hour drive or three and a half hour drive. But yeah, I got. I love all those guys, man. They're, they'll always be family. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, Daniel, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to come on and, and join us here on the show again. And just to just to let everybody know, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. I should have said that, man. I, <laughs> I should have said that. That was a perfect moment. Yeah, well, I think that you, you did even better with the Chael call, personally. Yeah. Like, like that was just me. Like when you brought, when you pulled John, Big John back, and then you called him out, it was like, oh shit, like, <laughs> that that's what's up. I love it because Chael, I, dude, I I'm a big Chael fan. Full disclosure, I am I too. Watch. I like listening to him talk. I agree. Whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent in terms of his opinion, I just I, I enjoy watching Chael's show. I think he's entertaining. Like I say, I get it that some of the stuff he has to be very polarizing in order to move the needle, and I might not necessarily agree with it. But God damn it, if I'm not watching it every week when it comes on, or every couple of days when it's on, yeah. or when he throws up different segmented clips onto YouTube, like I'm always watching it. And he always talks about how that's so much garbage for most guys that, oh, you know, just whoever they want to put put their next or whoever the next contract is, I'll, I'll be ready. Use the opportunity wisely. Use it, you know, use, use it to build your brand and to call out the American gangster of all people in that situation. Like, I just, I loved it. I was a, I was a huge fan of that, man. And I, I, was, I was so happy for that, that entire sequence of events. Yeah, I, I was hoping he would uh, say something, but there's been nothing. I, I don't know if he will do that, like say something, just because then more fighters will probably do it. But, you know, it, it is what it is. My next call out is going to be even better. I got a, I got another name I'm going to call out. So, nice, nice. I, right. I won't ask for the spoiler. I'll, I'll wait for the surprise. All right. <laughs> but so you know, just to kind of tie things up here from our end of things, we are the comments from the Peanut Gallery podcast. You can follow us along on social media. Check us out on Instagram at comments from the Peanut Gallery. Check us out on Twitter at Peanut Podcast. You can also follow us on Patreon where if you like what you see, all of the original content that we're putting out for you, you can become a patron for the comments from the Peanut Gallery page, and we will happily shout you out and credit you for any sort of contributions that you put out there. And again, want to throw a shout out to our people at Performance MMA. Go to www.performancemma.com, type in the promo code CFTPG for 15% off, and hit hit up uh, hit up Pure Spectrum CBD for some of the best products that you could find out there on the market. 100% organic, 100% guarantee, THC free, third party tested, results guaranteed, everything from tinctures, salves, lotions, rubs, all of the needs that you could possibly have for recovery and an active lifestyle or if you suffer from inflammation, check them out. Coupon code CFTPG10 will get you 10% off in the in the checkout. Thank you guys so much for following us along here today. You know, Daniel, thank thank you for uh, for coming along. And real quick, what's uh, what's your social media handle so everybody can give you a follow? Uh, it's Daniel Scary Carry and Instagram, Facebook, everything. So awesome! Make sure that you guys give my man Daniel Scary Carry a follow. And uh, and what about the team? Do you know the team's handle off top? I don't. I just know it's uh, Family Combat and Fitness. 
I'm pretty sure that it's as simple as that online. Yeah. If you look at them up on Instagram, it should come up right away. It might have MMA tied on the very end, but you should be able to see right then and there what it is. Once again, this is the comments from the Peanut Gallery podcast, www.cftpg.com. Check us out. Thank you very much, Daniel. Oh, you're welcome, man.